Regarding the uh, New Covenant and the Lord's Table, um, some did. Pe some have brought that up, and I think I've addressed it in some places, but I just wanted to do it real briefly. Um, the the thing that the Lord commem the, the the supper that the Lord had was a Passover with his disciples and it fit in the seven day model of the old creation um, the new creation starts on the first day or the eighth day uh, we're we are of the new creation and that's why the church started immediately began in resurrection by commemorating and showing forth the Lord's death on the first day or the eighth day. They didn't do it on the Sabbath. And, you know, the Adventists say we're wrong for doing that with James the Times, but no. From the very beginning, they were breaking bread on the first day of the week to represent resurrection, represent new creation. Now, the new creation was a mystery. What is the new creation? It is Christ with his body, the church. We are members of Christ. We are the body of Christ. We are in Christ's stead here on the earth, and when we show forth his death, we um, are doing so in his stead. So, someone asked, you know, doesn't the fact that we celebrate the Lord's table mean that we're partakers of the new covenant? And my answer was no, because we've been baptized into the one making the covenant, we're not the party that he makes the covenant with, which is Israel, the nation. We are uh, the ones who have been baptized into his death and emerged as a new creation from his resurrection. And we are one body. And so Paul, in 1 Corinthians 10, says that the, the bread we break is the fellowship of the body the cup we drink, the cup of blessing which we drink is the fellowship of the blood. And then he says, for we are one body, we are even one loaf or one bread. Because we're the many grains who've been brought together to become one bread, one body. And so when we show forth his death till his he comes, we do so in his stead as the body of Christ. And the early church knew that this was such a momentous thing that they had head coverings, and Paul said it was because of the angels who were watching. Now, it's not an ordinance or a law that we have to do, um, but it's healthy for a group of people to recognize this truth, that based in the, on the mystery of Christ, we stand in resurrection as part of the new creation on the eighth day, and yes, we are showing forth his death as a testimony until he comes, and we're living in his life as a testimony until he comes. We are his testimony. We are the lampstand. And when we break the bread, we recognize it's so significant that even angels are watching because they're watching these people living under the headship of Christ by faith, acknowledging something they can't see, but knowing it's true. It's really a big sign. Again, we don't have to do that. It's, it's, um, I, I don't believe we're under a law to keep it, like, like keeping the feast or something like that. Um, but it is an enjoyment by grace to do so. Uh, when it's actually done under the realization of who you are in Christ. And, you know, I met with that one Chinese church I talk about quite a bit, but when we came together we would all stand in the middle of the, we would, we met in a square and there was the bread on the table in the middle. And at a certain point in the meeting, when it reached its peak, we would come forward and we would all break the bread together, signifying our unity as the body of Christ and signifying that we are the, the fellowship of the body. And when Paul says in Corinthians, you know, is, uh, some of you say is you're of Paul, some of you are of, of, of Cephas, some of Apollo, some of Christ. His answer is, is the church divided? No, he didn't say that. He said, is Christ divided? Is Christ divided? The realization he wanted them to see was that we are Christ. We are his body. And then again, when he says, you know, for as the body is many members and not all members are the same and the head can't say, I have no need of you to the feet. 
He says, so also is the church. No, he didn't. He said, so also is the Christ. Paul's revelation is that we are the body of Christ. The church is his body, which is his fullness. And this body is called the new man. It's a new creation out of his side, out of his resurrection. Okay. And we are reckoned as being him. We are clothed with Christ and have put him on. And we come to the father in Christ and everything that Christ has is ours. And we are co-heirs with him. And as he is, so are we in this world. That's how God sees us. We are a fragrance of Christ unto God. Uh, because he dwells in us. We have been brought into that union. He said, in that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and my Father is in me, and I in you, and you in me. That is the unity of the body of Christ. And when we break bread, we're not just celebrating the Passover like they did at the Last Supper. We are celebrating our place in the victory of Christ in front of the angels. We are celebrating and, and testifying of his death and resurrection, which produced a new creation, the new creation of God, the new man, the body of Christ, and we're one with him. So are we another party in a covenant that he's making? No, we are one with the one making the covenant. Um, so we are, we do benefit from the everlasting covenant that God made with Abraham, but it's because we've been baptized into Christ. Otherwise, as Gentiles, again, we'd have no part of it. And again, the new covenant didn't come except to replace the Mosaic covenant. It's not part of the everlasting covenant. It's something new, and it's specifically for the nation of Israel, just as uh, the old covenant was. The old covenant is the Mosaic covenant. Paul's argument, Galatians 3, again, is that the law, which was 430 years after the everlasting covenant, couldn't disannul the inheritance or make it of no effect. And our inheritance comes because we are Abraham's seed. How are we Abraham's seed? Not by genetics from ourselves, but by being baptized into Christ and having put him on. We are clothed with Christ. So we are one with the one who is the heir of all the covenants. And he's our life. And he's kept his part in the everlasting covenant that we, he made with the Father. Um, he, to be the shepherd of the sheep and to lay his life down for the sheep. Now, he didn't really made, need to make an everlasting covenant with the Father. But according to Hebrews, he did that for our sake. Uh, he established it with a vow and with, a, with an oath so that we, um, knowing God cannot lie, would have an anchor for our soul. I mean, he, he, he doesn't need to establish trust in himself. He's God. But he did that for our sake so that we would know the immutability of his promise, as Hebrews says it, so we would know how serious he is. He confirmed it with an oath. To surely bless and bless us. That blessing comes from the Abrahamic covenant, not the Mosaic or its replacement. Um, so again, you know, people ask, well, um, isn't the fact that we celebrate the Lord's table mean that we're partakers of that covenant. No, we have a different position. We are not on the side of the covenant uh, parties that he's making the covenant with. We are on the side of the one making the covenant, and we're standing in his stead, testifying of his death until he comes, standing, though, in his resurrection as the new creation on the earth, as the body of Christ. And then, one magical moment, <laughs> uh, in a twinkle of an eye, that new man is going to be caught up to reign, right? Caught up to the throne. That's Christ uh, in his church, and we'll be caught up together with him. So he's going to come and descend to the cloud and catch us up, and we will be with him. And he will share with us the rod of iron, and he will share his inheritance and his glory, because we are one with him. And when he comes to execute judgment, he's coming with us. So... From then on, we will be functioning with him uh, with no separation. But now, because of the flesh, um, we have a muted sense of these things, you know. But I think that the Lord's table is far more significant than we realize when you remember that the church, when he celebrated that Passover, the church was still a mystery that had not yet been revealed. 
Paul says that that mystery couldn't be revealed because if the princes of this world had known it, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. It would have stopped the whole thing if they'd known what he was going to produce through his death and resurrection. It was just, you know, the, he said, this is my blood for the, shed for the forgiveness of sins. But that's not the only thing he accomplished. He, in his death, produced and created the new man, which was something that had never even been heard of before. So the Lord's Supper, that last supper, that last night, is not the end-all, be-all for our position in Christ. His resurrection is because we come out with him. We were buried with him in his death. We were baptized into his death. And then we were made alive together with him when he comes out of the tomb. And that's where we are, the new creation on the earth. Um, so, again, no, I don't believe that we are parties in a covenant. Uh, we are benefactors of a, of a testament because um, the death of the testator has occurred. And we don't have anything to do with that new covenant for Israel. Okay, thanks.